Hello and welcome to this special episode about Air India Flight 171 which crashed on June 12th while taking off from Ahmedabad Airport en route to Gatwick, London, killing 241 people on board and dozens other on the ground. There was only one survivor. It's been about six days since this incident took place and I'm sure all of you must have been following this incident very closely. There have been some very special comments from people who fly such air aircraft, that is Dreamliner pilot, and the their comments have been pretty significant. And as far as the question goes that why this crash took place, well, I think right now it's too premature to answer this. So in today's episode, I'm not going to speculate about the causes of the crash. That I leave to the experts. But what I'm going to show you is some data which, according to me, no one has showed you till now. Data from Flight Radar 24 application. It's a very popular aircraft tracking site. I'm sure all of you would be knowing about it. So here's what I'm going to do in today's episode. I'm going to show you data from Air India Flight 171 from June 9th, June 10th, June 11th and then compare it with the data from coming from flight radar 24 for the same flight on June 12th and let's see if we see something out of the normal some aberration something which shouldn't have been there in addition to this I'm also going to show you some historical data of flight AI 171 which goes from Ahmedabad to London for the past one month and that's going to bring out some very interesting aspects of this flight. Of course, there will always be a question that how accurate is data from Flight Radar 24? Well, uh, this is what I could get from the internet. Flight Radar data is generally very accurate for the tracking aircraft with active transponders, particularly those using ADS-B technology. However, accuracy can vary depending on factors like data source, distance from receivers, and whether the aircraft is in an area with good coverage. Now, one would believe that the ADSB coverage in Ahmedabad should be pretty good, but when I have looked at the data in detail, I do find there are significant data gaps. So, within these limitations, I'm going to present you this data. Let me start by giving you the ground situation at Ahmedabad Airport on June 12th about the time when Air India 171 was about to take off. Uh, this is Ahmedabad airport in the map. The data is from Flight Radar 24 and uh, AI 171 is just standing, just uh, about to enter the runway. At that time, you would see a few more aircraft at Ahmedabad airport. Now, the one of them is uh, Ahmedabad Dehradun flight, uh, 66712 which was right behind air india 171 now this is uh, the pilot who would be able to tell quite a lot about what happened that day because um, this flight was then discontinued cancelled he was not allowed to take off and just a few minutes before this while air india 171 was waiting here uh, indigo flight 6112 had landed at Ahmedabad coming in from Chandigarh. Now what you see here is the flight track of AI-171 on June 12th. Uh, this white line shows how the aircraft uh, proceeded. There are very few data points coming in from, from flight radar 24. We get it only till the end of the runway. The aircraft did go on and crash uh, a few hundred meters thereafter. Now, what I've done here is I've taken data from Flight Radar 24 and uh, plotted it on Google Earth. Now, this is going to give you a 3D perspective of the entire incident. Now, there are several things you will notice here in the 3D. One is you might be able to observe the height of the aircraft at the runway end. It's about 600 feet above the runway. The second thing you will notice here is 
that the but when the aircraft came on the runway it did not backtrack that means it not it did not go ahead down the runway then turn and then take off so it used where it used a limited part of the runway and this is something i'm going to show you further how the other flights have been using the runway this view shows that aspect very clearly. The aircraft comes out of the taxiway and turns right and then does a takeoff directly. So let's start with doing some measurement. Let's measure the length of the runway at Ahmedabad Airport. So I start from the end, I draw this yellow line. I'm, I'm using Google Earth and I get uh, a length of about three and a half kilometers. Next, I measure how much runway was used by AI 171 on June 12th. So that's from this point here. And I again measure the distance till the end of the runway where I find the aircraft was about 600 feet above the ground. Approximately, this flight used about one and a half kilometer length of the runway. Now let's start our comparison with the same flight on other days. We start with June 9, 2025. The white line here shows the track of the aircraft while it's on the ground. It starts from the terminal, it traces the same path as AI-171 did on June 12th, comes out at the same intersection at the runway, but then backtracks about a thousand feet or 300 or 400 uh, meters behind so it goes back then does a u-turn and then they take off and the yellow point here is uh, the point when the flight gets airborne the first data point after the flight gets airborne this uh, june 9th flight also used quite a bit of the runway i think it uh, went airborne just a few hundred meters before the end of the runway this is AI-171 on June 10th. Observe the ground track. It came out at the same intersection on the runway, again went back uh, 200, 300, maybe 400 meters, did a U-turn and then took off. And the point uh, where it gets airborne is much uh, before the end of the runway in this case. AI-171 on June 11th it's about it's a repeat of the previous day's flight again the aircraft comes out at the same intersection goes back about 300 meters did a u-turn and then takes off so how much of runway was available to ai 171 on june 9 10th and 11th well i've done a rough calculation of the point where they did a u-turn and started their takeoff run the runway available to them at that point is about 2.3 kilometers. So what we can conclude from this data is that unlike the flights on June 9th, 10th, 11th, AI-171 on June 12th did not backtrack on the runway, did not go back to get more runway available to them. They came out of the taxiway and just took off. I will also like to show you the temperature that day in Ahmedabad. This data I have taken from AccuWeather. Now, uh, on June 12th, the temperature, uh, the maximum temperature that day was around 42 degrees. Now, maximum temperature usually occurs around 2 p.m. during the day, which was very close to the time when this flight took off. Now, before that, the maximum temperature was a shade lower. It was around 41 or 40 degrees. But that particular day happened to be the hottest period during that week. So here's another recap of uh, the takeoff of AI-171 on June 9, 10, 11, and 12. June 9, you can see how the flight went. It backtracked. And then the first point available after it was airborne was close to the end of the runway. On June 10th, the flight again backtracked and then it was airborne somewhere here much before the end of the runway. 
June 11th, again, the flight was airborne much before the end of the runway. It had backtracked a few hundred meters. On June 12th, the flight came out of the intersection, took off, and it is airborne at the end of the runway. Here's a summary of what all I said in the form of a table. I'm going to go a little slow on this as this contains quite a bit of crucial information. We start with the first row. Remaining length of the runway at the start of the takeoff point. Uh, June 9, 10th and 11th, as I've shown you, it was about 2.3 kilometers because the flights had backtracked on the runway. On June 12th, it was about 1.6 kilometer which was left over. The maximum temperature at Ahmedabad uh, on June 9th was 41, June 10th was 40, June 11th 41 and on June 12th it was 42 degrees centigrade. We all know that the engine uh, performance degrades with higher temperatures. Aircraft speed at takeoff point. This is very crucial. In all the cases, the takeoff speed of the aircraft, aircraft was above 180 knots, 183, 182, 185. But on the June 12th flight, it was 174 knots. Not that this is a bad speed. I'm just comparing it with the other speeds. Then we have the aircraft altitude after takeoff. That's the first data point I get from flight, flight radar 24 when the aircraft is airborne. On June 9th, it was 725 feet. June 10th, 575 feet. June 11th, 550 feet. And on June 12th, it was 625 feet. Not a bad height uh, position at that point of time. Aircraft heading, I think all of them are the same. It is 223 degree. It is aligned with the runway. And the last one is the giveaway here. The vertical speed. That is the rate of climb. On June 9th, the flight climb was climbing at 1,856 feet per minute. On June 10th, it was climbing at 1,920 feet per minute. On June 11th, 1,600 feet per minute. And on June 12th, that's the aircraft that crashed. It was only climbing at 896 feet per minute, almost half the rate of the other flight. Now, I have also analyzed AI-171 data from Ahmedabad for the past one month. That is from 12th May to 12th June 2025. And this is just to give you an idea of the basic parameters, how they have been for these flights. Now, there's a lot of missing data during this period. Either the data has not come in at the proper time or the flight was not there. So whatever data I have, uh, which I'm showing you, is uh, for the one for which the data has been correctly received. Now, if you see the height of the aircraft at takeoff point, it would be, I think, on an average of about 600 feet. So there was nothing wrong with the height of AI-171 on June 12th. And then we have the speed, which is the pink line. Now, the speed at takeoff point, you can see, is 190, 184, 181. So, you can probably average it out to around 183 or 185. For AI-171 on June 12, this was really a bit, little bit lower at 174, but it wasn't uh, very alarming. Now, what is really alarming is the rate of climb. Now, that's what I plotted here in the blue lines. You can see the rate of climb is 1792 feet per minute. It goes up to over 2500 feet per minute. Now, if you average this out, I think it will come to above 2000 feet per minute. And that's where AI 171 on June 12th showed uh, some problem. The rate of climb was very, very low, 896 feet per minute. So the aircraft was a shade slower, its rate of climb was, was very low, then that explained why the aircraft nose was up at that time 
the pilot was trying to gain some lift by putting the nose up. Now all this data points to the fact that something happened to AI-171 on June 12th after it started its takeoff roll. That is, it was speeding down the runway and then something has happened. And that whatever happened, the pilots uh, could not uh, detect it before the V1 point. That is the point after which the plane has to take off. So that's uh, all in today's data. I think this might give you some more insight uh, into the incident. I really don't know the causes of why this happened, but this data is sure going to point at quite a few aspects of this incident. Thank you for watching.